Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. First, completely painted row or column. So I'm back in the lab and in this video, we're actually gonna be solving a pretty reasonable problem, even though the last two daily leak codes were very, very hard in my opinion. This one is pretty reasonable for a medium problem, I think. Now I could go through the description, but I think it's easier just to start with the examples. To be honest, we are given two parameters here. One is the matrix. So that's what you kind of see over here. The first row in the matrix is going to be one, four, and then the second row is going to be two, three. And so the guarantee that we have is, well, first of all, we're given a parameter, which is an array. And this isn't necessarily going to be equivalent to this one. Like the order of elements in here could be completely different than the order of elements here. But the guarantee that is given is that the size of both of them is going to be equal. So if the matrix is M by N, then we guarantee that the array is going to have exactly M times N elements. So the number of elements is going to be equal and the elements themselves are going to be equivalent in that this, um, the matrix will have numbers in the range from one up until M times N in this case. Now in this case, that's two times two. So what we're saying is that it will have all the numbers between one and four present in the matrix. If all of those numbers are present, well then we can guarantee that each is present only exactly a single time because that's how many slots we have. I think this is like the pigeonhole principle. And every element in the array is also going to be the same. So it's also gonna have numbers one through M by N. I'll blow up the example even more just so we can really focus on the numbers. So what this problem is asking us to do is relatively simple conceptually. Implementing it and making it efficient is not super difficult, but that's kind of where the complexity of the problem comes. Because what we're doing here is this. We're gonna go through element by element from left to right in the array. And then we wanna be able to find that exact same element in the matrix. And then we want to color it. And coloring it doesn't really mean anything. You could say something else. You could say we're marking this. Maybe we're marking it as visited or something else. It doesn't matter. But we color that element in the matrix. So we will have to do some kind of mapping. We will have to figure out which position that element is actually at because it's not necessarily going to be the same as in the array, even though right now the first element here is the first element here. That's not always going to be the case. With the second element, it's three. We already marked one. Now we mark three. So then we end up with something like this. And then lastly, we go to four, we mark that as well. And then we end up with a matrix like this. And at that point, we actually stop. We can stop going through this array and we can then return the index of the last element that we visited, which in this case, we went through one, three, and four, which have indexes of zero, one, and two. So the last element had an index of two. So that's what we return. Now you're probably wondering, why did we stop here? Why didn't we go through the entire um, array? And the answer is really simple. We stop once an entire row or an entire column is fully painted. So you can see that initially we had nothing painted and then we painted this guy. So the row and the column is not fully painted. Next, we paint uh, this one. And then, so we have two painted. This row is not uh, the column and this column not fully painted. Same thing with the rows. To very quickly go through uh, this example, first we will paint two, that's this one, then eight, that's over here, then a seven over there, a four, uh, this state, and this column is fully painted. So we can immediately stop and we can return, I think here, four was the last element which had an index of three. So now we kind of know what we're trying to do. How exactly would you do it? If you even tried to go with a brute force approach, you could probably get a working solution. It just wouldn't be super efficient. This is the most, I think, brute force way to implement it would be for every single element that we see here, we would then find the position of that element in the matrix, and then we would mark it somehow. Maybe we would modify the matrix that we're given, or maybe we would create our own matrix and call it something else, but it would have the same dimensions as this, and then we would somehow mark it, which that itself would be an O of N times M operation. You'd have to scan through the whole matrix potentially. And then after each modification, we might wanna check has any row or has any column been fully filled, 
and that's also not a super efficient operation and we're doing that for every element here so this would be like an n squared m squared solution thankfully it's not super difficult to optimize this all we really need to do is think about that inefficient operation and how we can possibly optimize it I'll give you a hint, a data structure is gonna be useful. I think in this problem, you might be able to use uh, an array, but I think it's also fine to use a hash map and that's what I'm specifically gonna be doing. Well, I guess there's gonna be a couple things. There's two main things that we need to speed up. One is the lookup. So from the array, we want to find the element in the matrix. So we need to do the lookup efficiently. The second thing is we need to be able to verify the matrix. We need to know immediately once a, a column or row has been fully filled. And both of these are actually not super difficult to accomplish. We'll be using data structures for each of these. So this one is, I think, relatively simple. All you pretty much do is hash map jutsu. Just create a mapping for every single element in this array, which we already know is equivalent to all the elements in this array, except the positions are different. So what we do is not traverse the array. All we really have to do is traverse the matrix. This literally tells us where each element is. We go through the first element. Okay, well, the coordinates of that are zero, zero. The next element two is at zero, one. The next element five is at zero, two. And it just kind of keeps going from left to right and just keep going down. So it's very easy to build the matrix, which will map an element to the coordinate. So what I'm specifically gonna be doing is for every a number n, I'm gonna map it to a pair, the row coordinate pair. And so I think this is easier to do with a hash map. You might be able to do this with arrays as well, one array or like two separate arrays, but it doesn't really matter too much how you do it. You just need some way to map the number to its coordinates. Second is how can we know? Like when we went from here to this state, how do we know that by coloring the four, we were able to either get this entire row filled or the entire column filled? How could you know and how could you know efficiently, possibly even in constant time? Well, first things first, we don't have to check every single row because we only add an an element here, we added this element. So how is it possible that we filled this row? Or how is it possible that we filled this column? This row and this column weren't previously filled or we would have returned when we were here. We didn't, so all we need to do when we uh, add this for is to verify this row and this column. And you actually don't need to scan through the entire row or the entire column if you use a couple data structures. I'm gonna use a couple. One is gonna be called row count and the other is gonna be called column count. You could use a hash map for each of these or you could use an array as well. But either way, what each of these is going to do is map a particular row. So this is row zero, row one, row two. Map a particular row to the number of filled cells in that specific row. And we're gonna do the same thing for every column as well. So when we're here, we find that this column had a fill of one and this row now has a fill of one as well. Before, uh, everything else was zero. Eventually we get to here and we find that this column has two and this row has two. And then eventually we get here and we find that this column has three. And so we can return because three is equal to the total number of columns that we have. But anyways, if we can do these optimizations, we can basically do both of these in constant time, giving us a overall time complexity of M times N. We will have to traverse the entire matrix, I think a couple times, but that's still this time complexity and space complexity. I think with these data structures is also gonna be M times N, I think mainly because of this first hash map. Anyways, now let's code it up. So I usually just like to start by getting like the dimensions of the matrix and then put them in a couple variables. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, the matrix to position. So this is gonna be the hash map I was talking about. It's gonna map a given number to the row column coordinates. So I'm gonna go through every uh, row in the rows, every column as well. And then simply, I wanna map the value at these coordinates, so matrix, row, column, this value should be mapped to the coordinates, row, column. And this should be the key in my hash map. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Put the hash map 
use this as the key. So step one is complete the first data structure. The second data structures are going to be filled as we go. I'm gonna call them row count. It's gonna be an array of all zeros right now. Same thing with column count. So each of these is just gonna store the count of every column and every row. And so now we can start traversing. We're not gonna traverse the matrix. We're gonna traverse the array like this, I in range length of array, because now we wanna take elements from the array and then fill them in the matrix. And now it's easy to do that. We are gonna first get the coordinates that we wanna fill. So matrix to position, which value am I looking at? Currently, I'm at index I in the array. So I say array at, whoops, I really gotta disable my caps lock, but array at index I will give us the row column coordinates. And then all we do is increment the number of filled rows or filled cells at this given row. And same thing with the column. And now if either of the following conditions are true, we are going to return. And what we're supposed to return is the index I. So that's what I'll put down here. So either the column count that we just updated has now reached the value that we wanted it to be, which is columns tells us how many columns that we have, but it doesn't tell us how many elements are in a given column. That is actually determined by the number of rows. So that's why the column count, once it's equal to the number of rows, we know that that column is fully filled. Or the opposite, if the row count at this given row is equal to the total number of columns. If either of these is true for these ones that we updated, then we can return. And we're guaranteed to return eventually, so we don't need to put a return statement out here unless you're using like a, I think, statically typed language or something. But let's go ahead and run this. And I must have gotten lucky with the leak code gods because I'm at like 97%, but earlier I don't think I was. Anyways, if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.